If you want to get into cybersecurity, even if you have zero experience, this is what I would recommend you do. Before we begin, if this is your first time seeing my video, hello, my name is Steven, and I've been in the cybersecurity industry for over eight years now, working within the security operations domain. And on my channel, you'll find a lot of cybersecurity tips, blue team related lab walkthroughs, and projects where you can follow along and put onto your resume and portfolio. By the end of this video, you'll have an action plan so then you can get started right away and begin your journey into the field of cybersecurity. I'll break this down into three categories where the first category is your reason, aka your why. Why is it that you want to get into cybersecurity? What is the main reason? And you might be wondering, well, Stephen, what does that have to do with anything? Well, let me tell you about something I've learned about success in cybersecurity and really any major life change. It all starts with your why. Think about it. The stronger your why, the stronger your commitment and the better your chances of actually making it happen. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people pump themselves up for a big change, whether it's switching careers, getting healthier, or fixing their finances, only to give up when things get tough. And I'm speaking from experience. Here's the thing. Everyone goes through five phases when making a big change, like getting into cybersecurity. And those phases are number one, uninformed optimism. You know what this looks like. You're scrolling through your social media and you see these cybersecurity professionals showing off their remote work lifestyle, flexing those six-figure salaries and thinking, hey, that could be me. At this point, you're seeing all of the benefits without understanding the underlying grind. Second is informed pessimism. This is the reality check. You start Googling, how do I get into cybersecurity? And now you're hit with thousands if not millions of articles and videos talking about certifications, fundamentals, frameworks, domains, and the list goes on. Suddenly, it's not looking so simple anymore. Third is Valley of Despair. This is where you realize that no, cybersecurity isn't as easy as it looks, and yes, it's going to take a lot of work. This is where most people quit and go back to phase one, and where having a strong why is important as it will help you get past this phase. The next phase is informed optimism. If your why is strong enough to pull you through the valley of despair, you'll hit this phase. This is where you stop looking for shortcuts and accept that real change does take time. You got yourself a game plan and you're following it and you're starting to trust the process. Finally, the last phase, success and fulfillment. This is what we're all aiming for when all of that hard work pays off. In cybersecurity, this is landing your first job and knowing that you've actually done it. At the end of the day, your why needs to be strong enough to help push you through these phases. And trust me, everyone's going to be different. But what really matters is that you have an action plan and you stick to it. As a reminder, at the end of this video, I will provide you with an action plan that will help you get closer to this industry. The second category is finding your domain. Let's assume that you know your reasoning as to why you want to get into cybersecurity. Now, the next step is to identify your domain of interest. You'll quickly find out that cybersecurity is a pretty large industry filled with various domains, such as security operations, the one that I'm in, governance, risk assessments, and many more. I'll leave a link down below for a video that I created walking you through the many domains that exist in this industry. And as a fun fact, that's my first YouTube video. When starting out, it may be tempting to learn everything and anything that you can get your hands on. And although that sounds like a great idea on paper, but in reality, it could actually delay your progress. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not saying that you shouldn't try learning material from various domains, but my recommendation when starting out is to research what domains exist and try to put your focus and learn as much as you possibly can towards that one domain that interests you the most. If later down the road, you find out that, hey, you're not as interested in that one particular domain, you can always switch to another one, which is one of the benefits in cybersecurity. One of the many resources that are available that I like to recommend is Try Hack Me, where you can learn about the different domains and areas within cybersecurity. The last category is training and certifications. This channel is geared towards those who want to get into the security operations domain. So I'll be using that domain as an example for this category. Once you understand your why and identified your domain of interest, 
you can start being more specific and intentional in your research, which should result in better answers. For example, rather than searching, how do I get into cybersecurity? You can now search for, how do I become a SOC analyst? And immediately the search results will be more geared towards what you really want rather than a generalization. Ultimately, the goal here is to find training that caters towards your domain of interest. Now, if I'm interested in becoming a SOC analyst, there is really no reason as to why I should be enrolling into a governance course other than to feed my own curiosity. Now, knowing that a SOC analyst is responsible for triage and investigations while utilizing tools such as a SIM, EDR, and a SOAR, I'll go out and look for a course, free or paid, that will provide me with training on these areas, regardless if it provides me with a certification or not. But speaking of certifications, this is an area that you should keep in mind, especially as a beginner trying to enter this industry. There is a fine balance with certifications. I mean, you don't want to collect as much as possible, but instead, you want to focus on ones that are specific, again, to your domain of interest and are popular among your area. For example, I always recommend CompTIA Security Plus as a starting certification because it is quite safe. In other words, many job roles are looking for candidates that have Security Plus. However, I am also aware that some locations don't even care for that, and they ask for something else like CISA Plus. So at the end of the day, do some research within your area and take a look at what certifications some of the entry-level roles are asking for. Those that are asking for CISSP. So those are the three categories to help you get started down the path of cybersecurity. And as promised, here is your action plan. Number one, enroll in free training. Before you invest a bunch of time into this industry, I want you to enroll in a free training offered by ISC Squared called Certified Cybersecurity. Now you don't need to get the certification. I just want you to learn the material because this is where you get to see at a high level what cybersecurity really is. And this is where you can start to ask yourself, is cybersecurity something you really want to get into? Number two, learn the fundamentals. If you are determined and you know that this is the path for you, continue to seek out training that will teach you the fundamentals because without it, you'll have a difficult time keeping up. These fundamentals will be IT, networking, and cybersecurity, and I will also provide a link to free training that you can take down below. Number three is certifications. Once you are comfortable with the fundamentals, you should now start to think about what domains interest you the most and also begin to study for the CompTIA Security Plus or whichever certification is popular among your area. But I would recommend Security Plus as again, it is a safe certification. Number four, hands-on experience. While studying for your certification or after being certified, you'll wanna start seeking out training that will help bridge the gap between theoretical and practical experiences as majority of what you've done so far should be mainly focused on theory. You want to start practicing what you learned by using some of these resources such as Try Hack Me, Hack the Box, Cyber Defenders, Let's Defend, and Blue Team Labs Online. Number five, blogging slash documentation. When tackling labs and projects, it is important for you to document your learnings and accomplishments via a blog post. Not only will this help build up your written communication skills, but it will also demonstrate your technical ability. And you never know who might be looking at your work on the other side. Overall, having a place to document your work can lead to conversations that could ultimately help you land a job. By following all of this, I am confident that you'll be that much closer to getting into cybersecurity. Now, do remember that change is difficult and it will take time. It is incredibly important to have a strong enough why to help you through the five phases. And you must trust in the process while staying consistent. Because without consistency, the chances of you making a change will be slim. That is it for the video and I hope that you found that informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.